I'm Carolee Gurney. I'm Stacy Reevely with North Texas Networkers, and we are sponsored by Craig Schrank with Willow Ben Morgan, and we are so thankful for him. Today, we are very excited. We have some special guests, as usual, but today we have Rachel, Rochelle Marie and Jordan Espeth. Jordan is the publisher and producer of Real Top, Top Producers Magazine. Real. Real, real producer. Close, close. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's about top producers, <laughs> and so we're going to be sharing with you about that. And then uh, Rochelle is his uh, publishing assistant. So welcome to the show. We're glad to, you guys are here. Thanks for joining uh, us. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, awesome. We're grateful to be here. Thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. Really. Well, <laughs> tell us just a little bit about yourselves individually first before we dive into the business part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, people get. They say top producers and real, they get them mixed up all the time. I'm so, and so glad I actually know. I just, I, you just start thinking it, about those top producers. Well, there's <laughs> Top Agent Magazine. <laughs> and stuff. It, it, we <laughs> use that lingo though too. And I've said to Jordan yeah. recently, we have to, our, to our team, we have to start putting in top 500 real producers, always putting in real producers because <laughs> people get it mixed up. So but It's a common mistake, so no worries. But um, but yeah, so, what well, sorry, the question yeah, yeah. again. About you, who about are you? About me, oh man, it's a loaded, families. It's a loaded <laughs> question. Well, um, I'm originally from Minnesota. I moved uh, to DFW about four years ago now, on my 28th a birthday. A a a about, yeah, you can probably hear the, <laughs> yeah, sure, you betcha, don't you know? Yeah, you'll hear the Minnesota accent yeah. come out a little bit. Uh, but I moved here four years ago on my 28th birthday. Uh, didn't actually know a single person when I moved here. I have a healthcare background to, to sum it up, but uh, I always had an entrepreneurial spirit and I was looking for something different. And, and um, I got introduced to uh, real producers um, through somebody back in 2017 and, and I loved what, what uh, they were all about. And they had an open market, real producers is a national franchise and they're in, in over hundred markets across the nation. Dallas, one of the biggest markets in the world was, was or I guess world, but in, in America was open. And uh, I was, I was like, let's, let's go there. And I uh, didn't know one person when I came here, and it was um, an extremely challenging thing to launch Real Producers, which I'm sure we'll go into a little bit more about what that is, but, um, but it's been one of the most rewarding things that has ever um, happened to me, and I'm, I'm just grateful for uh, the Real Producers opportunity. I'm grateful for all the agents and the businesses that are here that have made Real Producers what it is, and it's, it's, been, a, it's been a highlight of my professional career for sure. That's great. That's that's hard to pick up and just go start something new where you know nobody. I, that's yes. Hats off to you for that. Thank you. It was difficult. It was a challenge. <laughs> I'm also from the north. <laughs> I, so you might hear some sort of Canadian <laughs> accent though, and I I have not lost my A, even though I have been living here probably about nine, ten, some somewhere up there years. And so, like Jordan. Um, I just left what I was doing in Canada. I just, I felt from God that I was supposed to move to the States and I did know some people. I am a dual citizen and uh, my American side of the family mostly lives here in Texas. And so I thought I'm gonna start in Texas and then maybe I'll go to Nashville. And I just, I <laughs> wanted to travel, but I mean this many Years later, I am still here. Uh, didn't start out with real producers. I mean, I was living in East Texas, so I had not heard of real producers at all. Um, but actually through a uh, top producing uh, real producers agent, Heidi Marsh, uh, she connected myself with Jordan the day before he yeah, was gonna make story, this new hire decision and just gave him my resume and said he might wanna check it out. But um, yeah, that's how I ended up here. Yeah, she, she in, joined us, what, uh, a little over a year ago? Yeah. Yeah, a little over a year ago. She's been well, and it's producer. no surprise that you're in some sort of media from what I understand. Uh, your parents who were on our last episode uh, were also in Canada for a long time and yeah. host to a long running TV show. And yeah, uh, mm -hmm. so you're no stranger my, to the media world. Definitely not. My childhood playground was running around in the television studios there in, <laughs> in Canada. And actually what I was doing before moving to Texas, I was working for a, a big television show in the CBC in, in Toronto there for any fellow Canadians. Uh, <laughs> they, they would know that. But um, anyway, yeah, so no, no stranger to broadcast. And it's funny, I was telling Jordan when I um, started working for Real Producers, I said, I feel like, you know, all of my previous jobs were like schooling for what I'm doing here because it definitely has a mix of some broadcast, mm -hmm. you know, the, the promo you saw there, but also just 
doing events and, and involved in the publishing world as well. And so it's just yeah, all it's neat, together. all we're doing. Yeah, exactly. So you and I met a few years ago because yeah. I was excited to be one of your um, real producers. Um, and it's been a privilege and so much fun. But what made you decide? I mean, what was the deciding factor that said, hey, I think I'm just going to, you know, get involved in a magazine? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> You don't ever kind of grow up thinking you're going to own <laughs> magazines, but I, it, I mean, it, it honestly is a, it's a wild story. I went to college for seven years and I worked for seven months with my degree and then I went entrepreneurial. And so my dad loves that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we, we actually, true story, me and my dad have a great relationship now, but we didn't talk for, I think, three weeks after I told him what I was going to do with oh, moving here. Um, <laughs> he was hoping I was going to, because I, what I did, I mean, I was, I was a physical therapist assistant for a while. I mean... I was almost a nurse. Like I, I bounced around different degrees, but I, my, what I actually worked was a physical therapist assistant for a short while. And um, I just knew I had an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, when I was 20, I got introduced to a network marketing company, World Ventures. Um, and I just loved the concept of like, I, it was like going, growing up and going through school, no one ever taught me about you know, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship or you know, owning your own business and residual income or anything like this. It was just like, no, you get a job and that's what you do. And, and then like when I was 20, it was like, wait, there's other ways that you can like have a living and live your life. And, and I was just, I was enamored by it. Like I was just blown away by the idea of entrepreneurship. And I fell in love with it and tried several different entrepreneur um, endeavors with network marketing company. I even started doing life coaching and different, different things like that. Um, and how I got into real producers was my, in 2017, I was traveling around the country, speaking at real estate, a lot of Keller Williams bold classes. Mm -hmm. I was with a network marketing company called uh, Send Out Cards, if you guys are familiar with that. Um, but essentially it's a, a marketing um, tool that real, we were uh, telling agents how they could use it. And, um, you know, traveling around the country, staying at Airbnb hotels and, uh, and, and just, just always on the road. And I loved it, it was really fun for, for being 27. But I was, I wanted to kind of some more consistent and settle down a little bit. And I was looking for something different. I was almost done. Like we had a few more shows, a few more events that we were doing. And I was like, I need to find something else I need to do. And I, I was at an event in Topeka, Kansas. And one of the ladies that was there at the event just talked to me and she said, have you ever heard of real producers? Like, I think you would do really well at it. Would you like to hear more? And I was like, sure. I heard about it. I fell in love with it. And, um, one of the open markets was, was Dallas and, um, and, and, I, and I moved here, and I just, I loved the idea. Uh, again, I, 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 w I, I was deathly afraid of nine to five jobs. Like, I, there's something about it, it just does not sit well with my soul. And, and the idea of um, nine to five for me, just, it doesn't, it doesn't sit well. And so I was always looking for just something that would resonate with me, something that, that was, um, and when I heard the, the concept of real producers, I just thought how, how, how cool it was. And I was like, what to be a publisher of a magazine too? That has a nice, who do you nice know? Ring to who, it. Yeah, that's a nice ring to it. Um, <laughs> on a name tag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, wait, what does that mean even? But, um, but I loved the idea of it and I loved, I, I knew some people, obviously when I, I got involved with it, I just, I saw what other people were doing in different cities and I was like, that is a cool concept that I could buy into. And it fit well with my personality of just connecting people together and sharing their stories. And um, I loved it. And so, yeah, I came, came here February 6th of 2018. Wow. Yeah. And I love the energy that you've brought to it because that really shines through. You know, the different times that I've been at different events, you have just absolutely elevated those events and really made them something to want to be in yeah, you know that. we get a lot of things thrown at us i think as realtors mm -hmm. and to want to be somewhere like that is really unique yeah i mean it's it's a good thing so kudos to you on that thank you well tell us a little bit more then about the magazine itself yeah and how that all you want to give the, the the one minute elevator on what real producers is? I, I sure can I, I can definitely times, so. <laughs> just a few just a few and actually <laughs> loved uh, meeting with you Carol Lee last year sometime hearing your story and of course making sure you're all filled in on real producers and what we do and so the magazine it certainly is a core of what we do and yeah so hold it up there's our <laughs> January issue Lee Lamont for yeah. for our Dallas group um, 
But, you know, it does not go, the thing that's so unique about what we do in Real Producers is everything we do is exclusive for those that are the top 500 agents in Dallas or North Dallas. I think it's important to mention we have four different territories mm -hmm. in DFW and each territory community is distinct. We work truly with the top 500 highest producing agents and so one of those things that's exclusive to those agents is the magazine. It does not go to the masses. No one can subscribe to it. It goes exclusively to those agents. And thus, many agents consider it like a badge of honor. You know, that they're receiving their monthly Real Producers magazine. They're still in that top 1% to 2%. And really, I mean, why we do everything we do is to build community amongst the cream of the crop here in uh, here in DFW for real estate, both businesses, agents. We want to see you all become friends, you know, connect, collaborate, mastermind, really help take one another's businesses to the next level. I mean, we're firm believers that community, I'm sure yourself, community is so important no matter what sector of society you're in. And how incredible is it to have a community exclusive to those who are truly the best of the best in real estate running at that same pace. And so, mm -hmm. you know, in the, the pages of the magazine, I'm sure like you both have seen, you know, we want you guys to, yes, he hear work wise, but get to know these ones personally. And get to know also who are these top businesses that fellow top agents are working with. Why have they been so successful? And of course, get to know home and family life. And so um, that I would say is a is a little bit of a, a nutshell on the magazine. Anything you want to add? Well, I just think there's so much power in who you surround yourself with. And um, I know what's the, what's the Jim? I think it's Jim Rohn or Zig Ziglar's quote of you know if you look at the five people you spend the most time with. Um, the, the average of them is you. So if you hang around uh, five broke people, you'll be the sixth, right? If you <laughs> hang around five millionaires, you'll be the sixth. And I think taking that concept and, you know, when you, when you bring together the most elite real estate agents and the, the, the most highly recommended businesses that will work together, everyone that's working at the, 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 the top of their game and you come together and you're networking with them and you're getting involved with that, the only way that you're going to go is up. And I think that's the idea with real producers is bringing together the the best people in real estate to, to elevate, to make connections, mm -hmm. strategic partnerships, uh, just hearing ideas from other like-minded people that are also trying to, you know, be better. Well, I'll tell you what I really love about it, and this is one of the things you explained to me that first day we met, but it was just that, well, here's an example. Last couple of weeks ago, someone saw an ad or saw Article. one of the things going on, and, and they said, I wonder how much they had to pay to be in that article, and I looked at him, I said, you don't pay to be in that. That mm -hmm. is true, genuine mm -hmm. volume and, and what they do, and, and that just is, really means a lot, that you do something that special yeah. for realtors um, to, to lift them up and, and not asking for a handout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, that's one of the things that makes real producers unique is that um, if you're in that top 500, which is based off the MLS production for the year, right, off residential MLS production, um, which we know there's non-MLS transactions that happen and stuff like that, and, and um, there's not necessarily always a perfect system out there, but you're, you're getting pretty, pretty close to the true authentic top 500 producing real estate agents in that market out of roughly 60,000 in DFW. So there's roughly 60,000 licensed agents, right? And between the four markets that we have, we have collectively the top 2,000 agents. And um, if, you're, if you make the cut, right, if, and it's just, we're just looking at the data, and we're like, did you make the cut? You did? Okay, great. You're going to get the magazine. Um, you get to come to the events. You get our logo, which you've probably seen. The logo is just everywhere. Um, it's been really, really cool now that we have those four communities, um, all, the, all the love and the excitement that's happening with real producers. But then, yes, you also have the opportunity to, to share your story, which is a story about who they are and how they got to where they're at. We always try to make sure that real producers is not a brag book and that it's like, hey, you're the best. Now tell us how awesome you are. It's like, hey, you're the best. Tell us all the good, the bad, the ugly that you had to go through to get to where you're at. Because I think when, when people can hear your story, they, they see you differently. They resonate with you. And a lot of times it's just like, oh, well, Carol Lee, she, she's just a top producer because of X, Y, Z. And it's like, well, you hear your story, and then they're like, oh, my gosh. You know, they, you, you relate to people in a different way. And so it's an honor for, for us to be able to share their stories. But, yeah, you're right. They don't pay for it. Mm -hmm. It's just a testament to them, the business that they've, they've built. And luckily, we have a unique system where... 
all the businesses that partner with us are real producers, vetted business partners who've came recommended to us by top agents like, like yourselves. Um, those businesses have the opportunity to, to um, be a part of our, our community. They get to obviously ads inside the publication. They get to share their story. They get to come to the events. Uh, but they're the, they're the best at their game, and we make sure we vet them to make sure that they stay at a high level and that, that we feel comfortable recommending them. And, and they're, they're truly what makes real producers possible because everyone asks, how is it free? They're the ones that fund it, right? They're the ones that make it happen, but they're the best at what they do. So best agents, best businesses that all get to come together within it. And it's a unique model. I didn't come up with the model, but it's, um, I, when I heard it, I was like, that is just, and I have so many people are like, that's just a genius model. <laughs> Actually, Garrett, the one I'm high-fiving with yes. in that photo, he always jokes around with me. He's like, he's like, he, he just, he's mad that he didn't hear of it first. He always, he always gives me a hard time about it, but mm. it's a good concept. But I think it's just, it's so refreshing to top agents to hear as well, like, you know, this is a vetted community all around. Mm -hmm. And that the businesses that we do invite to be a part of this community, they get nominated in. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to we want to say 99.99% yeah, of the time, they're nominated in mm -hmm. by the top producing agents, a part of the community. They're yeah. not just some random business. And you, you didn't know go that on the yellow pages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that nomination, you know, and obviously we respect uh, these agents who are in that top one to two percent. I mean, they have to have some hard work, excellence, integrity to be where they're at. And so if they're gonna give a solid nomination of this business needs to be a part of the community, mm -hmm. they're one of the best, you know, we trust that agent. Yeah. And that gives us the opportunity to sit down with this business and explore. And so another wonderful thing about the magazine is in the front there, there is an RP vetted business page uh, list and it's updated monthly and it's put together by who? Those top producing agents. Mm -hmm. And so again, it's just a wonderful thing. I was uh, meeting with the top agent the other week and he just was so thrilled um, to find out this resource. And I think of another agent, she's like, I was always thinking there needs to be like an Angie's list for the top agents. And so when she mm -hmm. found out about this RP vetted business list, she was thrilled. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause a lot of times even too in brokerages, it can be hard to get out of the bubble and who the people are working with there, but to hear who fellow top agents who they're working with across DFW is, is, a, is a great thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like Jordan said, can really, I mean, these businesses are used to working at that pace, at that level. Right. And so you partner with someone like that, they truly can you know, take you up a notch, a couple notches. For well, sure. And we hold them to a high standard too. We, I think we've let four businesses to date go. Um, not, I mean, every business is going to have some negative feedback and, and everything like that, but we want to make sure that, you know, we're holding our, our partners to a high, high standard as well. And if we're hearing too many things from different people enough, we have to have that conversation. And, and today we've, I mean, we, so we'll, We'll let people go, even if they're willing to pay us money. And we're like, right. we, I mean, the name and the reputation, that standard of excellence is so important to us. Yeah. Yeah. Being an RP vetted means you are one of the best, recommended by the best. You know, those agents that are in that top one to two percent. And it's yeah. true. We want to, we, I mean, it carries weight. And so yeah. we were, we feel that responsibility with that. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you guys are a lot of fun. And um, I think that can be seen by some of the events that you have the special events that are just for the agents and for the, the people that are vetted to be part of the business. Mm -hmm. um, let's show a little snippet of one of your events that you had yeah. this past year. Let's do it. What's up, y'all? We are in the middle of the SB Awards. This event is absolutely crazy. It's probably hard for you to hear me. We have like 500 people here. It is off the chain. I know I say this all the time, but if you miss this event, I'm telling you, do not miss it next year. so fun. Carly and I were there and the venue was amazing. The
the program was amazing and y'all did a really great job. So tell us a little bit more about the SBs and what that is. Yeah, well, so so with Real Producers, we do events on a regular basis. This was the, the SBs was the first time that we had done an event like that. You know, we do we do events where we bring together the top top 500 agents and, and our business partners and, you know, um, have, have just high level networking. And they've always been amazing events, but this one, uh, we combined the three different markets that we have. You know, we're growing into a fourth this year, but the three we had last year, so the top 1,500 agents, we invited those and those businesses that are part of us and uh, a part of Real Producers. And we had a Black Tie Awards Gala where we actually had, you know, 10 different awards that were voted on. We had over 11,000 different people nominate their votes um, for those awards, you know, awards like, you know, Leader of the Year and Icon and Rising Star and, and just some really cool different awards that we had had given out and not many people in real producers across the nation had have done these awards gals but a few of them have and when they when they did they said it was just so so awesome mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I had to come up with a name uh, for the event and um, it was just too good with my last name being Espeseth ESPE um, and obviously ESP and SP awards. <laughs> and, uh, so if you notice like the logo and the awards and all that, like there's definitely a strong play to the ESP and SP awards. And one of my friends actually worked for ESP and I was just like, Hey, should I be worried in any way? <laughs> and he's like, honestly, he's like, ESPN doesn't care about the little thing you got going on. Down. He's like, you're, you're okay. So I was like, okay, good. But, um, that was one of my favorite events that we, we had done. It was just uh, more upscale and, um, I cannot wait to do this every year because it, it was, it was so fun. I'll tell you, it was really fun. I think Trey has a picture of us, Stacy and I, there at the event. We we just had a blast, and mm -hmm. so nice of you to do, and really different than your other events. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was just a pleasure to be a part of it. Yeah, it was cool. It was it was. Um, it was historic, you yeah. know, bringing together. Uh, for first time ever, an awards gala mm -hmm. uh, of the top fifteen hundred. Uh, do the other um, do the other franchise franchises do that as well or we Baltimore has done uh, Indianapolis the guy who started it Remington has had, has done it Orlando's done it there's a few people that have done it um, and now oh, you know they're, they're starting to now. as it's as it yeah as 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 they've done it I caught on after people saw me do it more people are like okay let's let's start doing this and so it's becoming more of a staple but um, it's just it's something that especially here when we're able to bring you know when we do it this year we'll be inviting the top 2,000 and I can, I, this, this event's probably going to get out of hand in, in the best way, but um, <laughs> it's just so cool when you can really genuinely take that many high-level people from mm -hmm. across the market. Because when we do events, normally it's like, okay, North Dallas, we're doing an event for you. You know, Fort Worth, we're going to do an event for the you. Dallas, there. yeah. Top but now it's like, for that one, it's like, no, everybody. Everybody come together, and it's... It's chaos in the best way. <laughs> we got to get a bigger space next year. Yeah, this year. For sure. <laughs> we will. You we had actually. another cool event that was in an airplane hangar, right? Yeah. Or was it? Uh, what's the, the Frontiers of, of Flight Front Museum. That yes. was a cool spot. Yes. Yes. I think we have a little video of that, too, if you want to show a clip. Yeah, that was a fun event. <laughs> Hello Dallas Real Producers. Welcome to the Frontiers of Flight Museum in Dallas, the location of our next Dallas Real Producers charity event. At this venue, you'll see everything from the Wright Brothers to modern space travel. The event will be on August 12th and will be taking flight from 5 to 7 p.m. So I wanted to show that clip because it talks about charities. Mm -hmm. So at these events, you don't just get realtors together. You also help other people. How, do, how does go ahead. how does that yeah. go about? Sure. Well, uh, one of our events a year per territory, we decide to have a charity focus where we give the opportunity uh, for agents to give back to a particular cause. So that a particular event that you showed there, we were giving to DFW Angels. Mm -hmm. And as Jordan you know, just mentions again and again about our community. It really is such a giving community. I mean, you all have such an incredible heart to give and to help. And so we love to give those opportunities to link arms, you know, with the charity. And uh, for each of our communities, again, one of our events per year, we do have a focus like that. Yeah. Well, you don't create something like this without overcoming a few struggles along the way. So what have been some of the biggest challenges that you guys have faced kind of getting to where you are now? Oh, well, 
I think for me, the, the biggest struggle, I'd say there's two, two that really come to mind. First, when I moved here, um, and I was this Minnesota boy, you know, who didn't know anybody that if you looked at his Facebook profile, it said he worked with a company called Send Out Cards. And I would go meet with businesses and tell them, yeah, I work with the best agents in DFW and you guys should be a part of what I do. And um, <laughs> they'd be kind of like, mm. um, And so obviously with, with the only way we can launch a magazine is, is if we have the, the funds to launch it. And it's expensive to have a magazine. Yeah. And um, most people, just to give you a heads up, like most people, they usually go 0 for 10 like, in real producers. You know, they're first, they sit down with a lender title, you know, they, they give the, the presentation and uh, usually they go 0 for 10 before they um, get their first sale. I went 0 for 40 and it was like, oh um, I, I literally, and I moved here. I mean, I put all my cards in, in, in this bucket and I was like, you know, this is, a, a, I'm either making this happen or I'm gonna die trying. And at 0 for 40, I was like, I don't, I mean, I'm, the things that go through your head, you know, I came here just for this, and the doubts, and did I make a mistake, and my dad's probably right, and he's definitely not going to talk to me, um, <laughs> you know, and so uh, incredibly challenging. Um, once we, we launched, which was a battle, but once we launched, and then it just started to grow. So that was that was the first biggest struggle, and then when Rochelle came on, um, you're not the struggle, that's not what... <laughs> Why? Where is this going? I had to manage her. Um, no, uh, you know, when we expanded from one magazine to two to three to now going to four, uh, I mean, you guys know when you um, grow a team, it's a lot different than, than when it's just, just you, yeah. right? When it's just you, you're like, you don't have your systems necessarily planned out or like written out and for others to, you know, hop in and start using. And so like growing a team of, of people and getting everyone on the same page and, and it was, it's a beautiful thing. I loved every part of it. Um, but the whole process of, uh, of slowing down so you can speed up, um, you know, so last year was a lot of adding people to the team and, and, and for myself as a leader trying to find the way to how, how do I properly lead people and what's the most important things to focus on and we, what do we need to make everybody be successful? That whole thing is new to me. Um, and it was, it was a lot of learning and growing. And luckily we have amazing people on my team like Rochelle and Lance and, and that have just uh, made it easy to work with, but still just that, that, that switch from it's just me to now we got to delegate and have more people involved. Um, the growing pains. The growing pains, yeah. which were beautiful, but um, challenging, very challenging. But you did it, and that's what's really important. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, do I, feel, I feel like you've got something else under your hat that's coming about. Are you getting ready to be involved in something else, or you have some other plans? Well, with Real Producers, we have – so the, the, the biggest thing this year with Real Producers is – we will, because we have <laughs> Dallas Real Producers, we have North Dallas, and we have what was called Terrence. So you'll see on actually this one right here, this says, what? this is the last one that will ever say Terrence at the top. Um, we, we, this has been in print for about a year, and when we, when we launched it, we kind of had a feeling that Tarrant County, it's such a large county, that it's true. <laughs> Fort Worth, where you live, is a little different than Southlake. <laughs> and everything we do with real producers is about creating a community around people that do business and work together, right? And so we kind of realized with our events, we're like, man, if we have an event in, uh, up in Southlake, like the Fort Worth people are like, oh, but right. that's not my area and right. vice versa. And uh, a lot of businesses will work in Fort Worth, but they don't really work with people up in Southlake. And so we actually split. So the Tarrant issue uh, here the, is the January issue. It says Tarrant Real Producers. In February, it'll say North Fort Worth Real Producers. Um, and, and we have the top five, so we split Tarrant into a north and south. And so there'll be a North Fort Worth for the top 500 agents, really in that northern part of that county, South Lake, that whole area. And then we are ramping up what's called Fort Worth Real Producers for those top 500 agents that are based in Fort Worth. And it'll be probably launched roughly August would be my guess. And so, um, again, to go from when I first moved here to have one to now have four that are going to encompass the whole area, it's going to be, uh, and that will be the end of expansion for the different territories within Real Producers. <laughs> so this year we'll have all four with top, top uh, 2,000. 2000. It'd be really cool. We're so excited Amazing. about that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Was well, there anything that we haven't asked you guys about that you want to talk about that we over Rochelle, anything on your mind? She's always, Rochelle, I'd love to say um, <laughs> um, hiring is when you expand, hiring is the most important it thing. It is very key. And, yeah, and learning to delegate and trust other people. And 
what is the saying? Slow to hire, quick to fire, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I was just very blessed with, with Rochelle. And she's so um, diligent and she's so focused. And one of the things that I always we always joke about, Rochelle is someone that I need to pull back and be like, "Hey, you're doing you're you're doing too good of a job on that email." Would like, you ever think a boss would say that to you? No, like, not. you were paying too close of attention to these details. I need you to look back a little bit and go. And so, like, it's. it's I say, what scale of thoroughness are we doing? Yeah. Low, yeah. medium, or how thorough should I be on this task? And so, um, you know, but that's that's a beautiful thing. But I say that because she's always got. Um, she's the queen of saying, "Hey, Jordan, one more thing." Um, <laughs> she's Girl. always got ideas. She's... I have that person that keeps you in line like that. Totally. Yep. Absolutely. So do you have one more thing, Rochelle? I got two more things, actually, <laughs> <I> Jordan. <laughs> you know, if we're talking about the community here, obviously, as we mentioned, we have the magazine, which is a big part of what we do for those a part of the community. We have the events, like we've been talking about. We also, you know, are creating community in the online sphere. Mm -hmm. And so we have a closed Facebook group, which hopefully you both are a part of there. Okay, <laughs> um, good. And so, you know, with the Facebook group, it's unique, just like our awards gala, where we invite all of the communities to participate at that one event. Facebook wise, you know, mm -hmm. Jordan Espeseth being the owner and publisher of all four, co-owner of the Tarrant County ones with Lance Dunahoe, we thought Facebook wise, let's just combine them all. Mm -hmm. And so it's just amazing seeing mm -hmm. also just the community grow in the online sphere. You know, you see uh, fellow top agents asking each other questions in there. We're putting out mm -hmm. questions and, and uh, just seeing people cheer each other on. And I have to say, that's one of just the beautiful things about our community. I can't tell you how many uh, top agents I have met with that just say, there is enough to go around. Let's help one another. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, such giving hearts, which I'm sure would surprise some people yeah. thinking, you know, you're in that top one to two percent. You're holding the secret sauce close, <laughs> you know, but these are ones that want to share, want to mm -hmm. help, collaborate, mastermind. And mm -hmm. so it's just neat seeing that take place in the online sphere. Anything you want to add there before well, I hop that, into that podcast? Was, that was a, that's been a medium thoroughness for Rochelle. I put her on the on the on the on the Facebook group as her kind of her project to, to grow that and we've given her medium thoroughness. <laughs> Thank you. We so, <laughs> have a podcast as well, right? Yeah. Tell us a yeah. little bit about that. Yeah, so that was the other thing I was going to mention. It's called DFW's Real Estate Best. Essentially, like the name says, we're having on the podcast and also live stream some of DFW's Real Estate Best here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we live stream through Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. So but Spotify. Yeah, but we're also on Spotify where people can subscribe and iTunes, a radio network. So going out to many different spheres. And it's just neat, you know, hearing again the stories like Jordan was saying, you know, where you are just getting inspired, challenged, you're learning some things. I mean, the podcast, the live stream is unique where obviously this is not going out just to the top 500. It's going out to a broader audience. So I know we have aspiring business owners, aspiring top agents listening in all sorts but it's just it's just neat hearing from those top businesses and top agents weekly on our yeah our what would podcast. you say is your most inspiring story that you've heard because I know you spend both of you spend one-on-one -on -one time trying to learn about each of the agents who are who are involved so is there an inspiring story you would share oh man we do hear so many oh. <laughs> stories uh, you know what we could share about who won the most inspiring story you know at the ESPYs because out, yeah. Uh, oh my goodness, you know, I, weekly, you're hearing just these incredible stories, you know, like Jordan's story, where they're just hitting a wall, hitting a wall, but that perseverance to keep going. And so, mm -hmm. goodness, yeah. I just, there's... Well, Marjorie's is amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, I think of James Sharp as, as another incredible story. Melanie Malumba. Yeah, so, oh. so you pick one. You're, uh, yeah, what's what's your favorite? Um, and it's our, it's oh, favorite, favorite. But, Jordan, don't do this inspiring. to me. <laughs> just one inspiring one. It doesn't have to be your favorite. Well, I, I'll, I'll share James, because James Sharp, is, he's always been such an awesome person. He, he, he has what's called, do you, know, you guys know James? I, I know of him. I don't know so, him personally. So he has an organization called Sharp Shoes, but if you hear, he grew up um, very poor and... Um, never had I mean his like I think he's had two homes burned down and like all uh, just a, a crazy story but he grew up very poor and he never had 
the shoes they always had had holes in them. And it was kind of, as, as a kid, his thing was always like, man, when I make it one day, like, I'm going to have, like, the nicest shoes. And so he started, um, so now he's one of the top producing agencies. I think he's been a part of Real Producers, you know, ever since we started. And um, he has an organization that he calls Sharp Shoes that gives back. He's, I mean, he raises now, like, thousands and thousands of shoes each year that go towards kids um, that don't have shoes. And um, his, but if you see James, if you don't understand him, you'd be like, oh, what a, what a, what an interesting fellow he is. <laughs> but if you understand James, and that's what I talk about, sharing people's stories. When you hear James's stories, because if he walked in right now, you'd be like, oh, his shoes would be like blinding you. <laughs> he always has the most exotic Very shoes. Very fancy. But, that's so funny. But so he, he, he does it as like a, um, as a reminder to himself, as like a he's promise like, to himself. He has a promise yeah. to myself. Like, hey, like so he's now he will go above and beyond in his shoes because it's 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 something that he had such a lack of growing up and it's it's, it's a reminder to himself yeah. and it's just it's so cool. So That's sharp neat. the sharp shoes. Yeah. It's a, a great amazing story. story and organization. And there's so many stories oh, like that. But yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, you, so cool. You hear stories like Melanie Malumba where you know, I think her, her teacher used her as an example to say she will mm -hmm. amount to nothing, you know, in front of the class, Wow. you know, in real estate. Yeah. And that just, you know, you can either break down from comments like that, but often we hear in this community where that was the fire, mm -hmm. you know, that caused these agents to rise to the top. And yeah. it certainly was for Melanie. She took that and she rose mm -hmm. to the top. And so I think of her, I think of Marjorie, mm -hmm. you know, within the top 100 for Dallas of uh, producing agents and just battle with cancer, mm -hmm. yet still showing up, still going out there, not letting it defeat her. I mean, just the, the range of, of stories and just different overcome. In fact, one of the features we have in the magazine is inspiring story, you yeah. know, yeah. hearing from just that. We want to focus in on one of those stories where you're just like, wow, yeah. you know, it's incredible where they, they came from and where they are now. And so, yeah, that's cool. That's great. We yeah, have done an excellent story. job. Excellent yeah. job for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. Yes. Mm hmm. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> so we always ask one question. I was going to see if she wanted to ask it, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, if you weren't doing this and money was no object and you could start over and do anything that you wanted to do in the whole world. And we've had somebody even want to be a window squeegeeer. Which oh, is really? What, <laughs> <laughs> what would you be? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> is this okay to say with my boss on the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it is. There's yeah. no bars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speak wisely, Rochelle. No, um, no so uh, for, first of all, I, I literally, it's it, with real producers, I just, it's such a perfect fit for my personality, mm -hmm. and I, I truly do love love what I do. I just um, recently started a coffee company um, that's a humor-based coffee company called Poo Brew Coffee. Um, <laughs> we're a humor-based coffee company that acknowledges the, the, the fact that coffee makes us poo. Um, <laughs> but we, we, but the, the key about it and why I'm passionate about it is because um, we believe that laughter and honesty can be some of the best medicines and we support mental health with our, uh, so we give back financially to mental health. And I'm someone myself that is um, going through college and, you know, really dealt with a lot of anxiety and depression to the point where it was, um, you know, never truly considered taking my life, but fantasized about the idea of just being rid of my pain. And um, so that is a kind of a, a side passion project for me that like, but it, it, to mental health and sharing uh, my story, and, and I'm a very lighthearted person that has always used humor as a way to alleviate my anxieties and, and, and everything, but I've, I've come through all that um, way better. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm very situational if I ever have anxiety or stuff now, but I mean, to, to look back to, to where I was and how I was feeling to where I'm at now is, um, it's motivating for myself. Like, I, it, it re-motivates myself to keep pushing and doing my meditation and all the different things that I do to make sure I keep my mind right. And uh, so that's, that's, that's something that's on my heart is a mental health side of it. And whether that's through my you know, humor-based coffee company or, or anything like that, but it would be, I mean, and, and, and mental health, I mean, suicide hasn't ever been as, as high as it is now and, and it's just close to my heart. And so um, I don't know exactly what it would look like, but it'd be probably something in that realm. That. Yeah. Which he's doing. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, for me as well, uh, you know how Jordan is going for this. This is a dream in my heart that 
you know, I believe in God's timing is going to come to fruition. Jordan knows about it. Um, I believe you do. Uh, but I've written a curriculum for preteen girls mm -hmm. on their identity in Christ. You know, I think it's so important, especially in today's world, before you get into grade seven, grade eight, high school, so many different messages that girls get a strong foundation of who's and who they are. And so many years ago, I wrote it. I had groups running in Canada, in the States. Uh, and how I describe it is it has the fun and silliness of a red hat society, which I'm not sure if any of you are aware of it, but yes, the women wear the purple garb and the big red hats. It's very, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very fun and silly, yeah. uh, but it has the richness of learning and experience that a Girl Scouts has in a different way. And so that is something I launched many years ago, has been just in the background, um, but I'm wanting, I've, been, I've had churches and organizations and groups ask me for it because mm -hmm. uh, they heard about it from other groups that had run. And so it's in my heart to finish that because before I was just handing out my little binders mm -hmm. <laughs> that I would do, <laughs> but I'd, um, it's in my heart to see it published and see, to see groups, you know, across the, the States here in Canada. And I've, I've had other, you know, different nations ask for it. And so that's definitely something I feel that I, it actually came to me in a dream in the night, which I believe God gave me. And so I know that that is something that um, I'm supposed to fulfill. And with that, Jordan knows I created a preteen girl magazine. So yeah, you actually have a, I mean, she I had a magazine. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to see that. And, and then mm -hmm. just something I did before, which um, opened to continue like Jordan's doing uh, the poo brew coffee there. <laughs> Uh, speaking, I, uh, help laugh I know. You hey, you don't want to get me laughing. You know, you know what happens. I saw you <laughs> kick that off on social media, and I just thought it was yeah. Funny. But just just speaking um, into the lives of girls and women has always been a passion of mine, and I used to travel and do that, and that's something still in my heart to continue to do as God opens up doors. And certainly, there's more more dreams and and things like that. Um, I love how Jordan has encouraged, you know, I remember getting to this job. He's, I, I think I shared with you about some of that and, mm -hmm. and you want to see us reach and, and fulfill those things. And so mm -hmm. I'm just trusting God that, you know, as, as time unfolds, he'll make it clear, uh, just what path and anyways, mm -hmm. so just, just Very different nice. dreams and things, but yeah. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. Well, you guys have been such an inspiration. I already think you're an inspiration. Just every time I see you, um, you really, you just both have a spark about you that is special and meaningful. So we're so glad you were able to be on the show with us today. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you. you guys having us on. And I know it was a battle to finally get it narrowed down and everything <laughs> like that. And, and yeah, <laughs> we made it happen. So thank you guys. Honestly, yes, uh, you. we really glad appreciate you were it. Here, for sure. Absolutely. Well, we just enjoyed having our audience here with us today as well. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carolee. I'm Stacy. And we are, are your real estate, estate professionals. professionals. Thank you for joining us on North Texas Networkers. Visit our website, mariposagroupdfw.com. That's M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A group, dfw.com for more information about the show and other resources. I'm Carolee. And I'm Stacy, and, and we, we are your real estate, estate professionals. professionals.